WCBI News at 6 starts now. Thanks for joining us tonight at 6. It's been a fixture on Columbus's south side for over a century, but soon the Palmer Home for Children will have a new home. Our Stephanie Poole joins us live in the studio. So, Stephanie, when is this big move expected to happen? Well, Scott, by the end of June, the Hernando and Columbus locations will become one. Palmer Homes president and CEO says it's, just, it's a move that they're looking forward to. Over the past 120 years, the Palmer Home has served as a safe place for children. Originating here in Columbus, the legacy served by providing a home and comfort zone. Now, it's moving to Hernando. President and CEO Drake Bassett says the board and staff are currently working to see that this move will go smoothly. This is part of a larger plan uh, to expand more services uh, to children who need them. Um, as we've gone through our whole child process over the past few years and taken a look at vulnerable children and what they need, we know they need residential, which we have provided for 120 years. From housing 30 children with ages reaching as far as 18, transition is important. Bassett ensures that staff and counselors are paying attention to how children will cope with the move. A lot of our kids are excited too. Um, it's, it's a new place, it's a new opportunity. We made the announcement, but we also spoke to staff and children first and explained the process. And uh, one of the reasons we, you know, we did that was so that we could go ahead and take the time that we need uh, over the next few months to make sure that um, the transition goes well. Foster care is a beneficial and imperative detail. They will continue to recruit and help families in the area who already care for Palmer Home children. And this is a bittersweet conversation. Um, the sweet part is, is that we're going to reach more children, serve more children, and help more children. That's the sweet part. The bitter part is, is that um, Palmer Home began here in Columbus 120 years ago. Uh, we're leaving a location. We're not leaving the legacy. We're carrying that with us. Palmer Home thrift stores in Columbus and other locations will stay in the friendly city. Administration and other operations will continue to be here in Columbus. Bassett says becoming one campus allows them to focus on residential, but also allows them to divert some of the same resources and create new programs in the future. All right, thank you very much, Stephanie. Well, a Knoxville County woman is accused of hitting a four-wheeler, carrying her ex-boyfriend and another person. 29-year-old Jasmine Calhoun is being charged with two counts of aggravated assault and one count of malicious mischief. Her bond is set at just over $11,000. Captain Vance Phillips says that a vehicle versus four-wheeler call came in last night from the Cedar Creek area. He says Calhoun was driving when she rammed the ATV off the road and into this fence here. Well, Phillips says the ex-boyfriend and another woman, they were on that four-wheeler at the time of that crash. It all, the crash rather landed all three people in the hospital with minor injuries. Phillips says witnesses helped identify Calhoun as a suspect. Some people around the community, you know, by this being a small community, people know, people now, you know, notify the, the uh, department of who did what and where their whereabouts be at. Oh, man. Calhoun was taken into custody after she was released from the hospital. Well, law enforcement, they say they deal with domestic violence situations on a daily basis. Winston County Sheriff Jason Pugh says sometimes they may even deal with several in a single day. Our Jory Talley, she joins us live in the studio with more. Hey, Jory. That's right, Scott. Pew says several things cause the numbers to be high and lead to situations escalating. One counselor I spoke with earlier today says it's hard to prevent those situations from spilling over. He believes in order to prevent these things, it has to start with early education. People still have that, not all the time, but that old mindset of what you'd see in like a Lifetime movie. You know, the abusive husband, the battered housewife. But the thing about domestic violence is that it takes a lot of different shapes. It's not just that kind of scenario. Counselor Andrew Levine says the definition of domestic violence refers to anybody who lives in the same household. And regardless of who's involved in these cases, Winston County Sheriff Jason Pugh says it's common to see tragic results. When that situation continues to build and continues to ex escalate over years and years and years or over months and months, and the, the, the parties keep getting back together, they keep reconciling, they... They, they keep going on, then that's when it starts turning violent. The sheriff and Levine say repeated cycles and high emotions are two things that trigger people to get to that point. It's not always just as simple as saying this is an impulse problem and they weren't thinking. 
Oftentimes they were thinking, it just wasn't in a healthy way. For instance, I need to teach this person a lesson. Nobody's going to make me look foolish. Who does he think he is? So on and so forth. Pew says Mississippi has great domestic violence laws in place, but a problem law enforcement often sees is people not using what's available. Looking down the road to say, well, this is my, my child's father, or this is my child's mother, or, you know, well, we've been together for so many years, or, or what do we do about the house, or, or, you know, where do I go from here? That, that sort of thing seems to hinder the process. There are programs available to help victims of domestic violence. Community Counseling Services also offers a 24-hour crisis hotline. Thanks very much, Jory. It's day three in the search for a missing Alabama man. Several agencies from North Mississippi are helping Monroe County deputies search for 48-year-old Roger Taylor. Taylor was last seen on Monday in Greenwood Springs there in Monroe County. He was wearing a green shirt, pants, and he was also wearing a ball cap. Monroe County Sheriff Cecil Contrell says they found Taylor's vehicle around Cemetery Road yesterday, but no sign of Taylor. Cantrell says family members say that he has a physical issue. He does have some uh, physical problems. I, uh, I understand he has some heart issues and some other issues. And, uh, you know, of course, that, that plays a part in all this, searching for him. And uh, we just hope we find him alive and well. Now, if you have any information on Taylor or his whereabouts, you're asked to contact the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. Time now to toss things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson with a first look at our forecast. Hey there, Keith. Scott, it's been a breezy day. We still have those wind gusts over 30 miles per hour in some spots, but temperatures have warmed into the low 70s, still in the low 70s across most of our area as we get into the 6 o'clock hour. A lot of clouds around here, showers and storms in Arkansas and Louisiana. They're moving more north than east, so at this point it looks like the best chance for rain and storms this evening and tonight will be across far northwestern Mississippi, really just staying off to our northwest. We'll watch it though as we go throughout the evening. Can't rule it out in the northwest, but most of us will not see any rain tonight. Lows in the 60s. Your full forecast, Scott, in just a few minutes. Cities, towns, and counties across the area are hoping to get some help to pay for repairs in the aftermath of severe flooding. Riley Martin, he joined the tour in Chickasaw County as a team of state and federal experts surveyed the damage. The joint MEMA and FEMA disaster assessment team spent their day in Chickasaw County. In the county, we had 34 different sites, roads and bridges included, that had damage due to the February heavy rainfall. And in the city of Oklahoma, there's 15 different roads that had some type of damage. This stretch of Jefferson Street was one of the hardest hit in Oklahoma. Heavy and steady rains overwhelmed the drainage system and caused water to cover yards and the street. Chickasaw County EMA Director Linda Griffin says it's important for the assessment teams to personally see and document all of the damaged areas. They can speak for us, you know, asking for a federal declaration to get that reimbursement for our counties. They can say, yes, I've been there and I've, I've seen the damage myself. Crews got to work quickly doing what they could to give the flood water somewhere else to go. In fact, the orange cones behind me show where the drainage ditch here on Jefferson Street was expanded. But the public works superintendent here in Oklahoma says a more permanent and more expensive fix is needed. And that's where he's hoping MEMA and FEMA funds will kick in. The covers are pretty, pretty expensive, especially the larger one. And this just not just this single area, but it's several other areas in town that got to be looked at as well. So we're looking for FEMA to, to help us finance this, uh, help us with it, where we won't have to go through this uh, later on. It could take several months to get FEMA and MEMA funds for infrastructure repairs. In Oklahoma, Ali Martin, WCBI News. Governor Phil Bryant declared a state of emergency February 25th. The state's emergency operations center is activated and monitoring any requests or unmet needs from emergency management offices around the state. Well, it may be spring break, but we are headed to school when we come back to meet the leaders of the band. Stay with us. Welcome back. West Point has a dynamic duet in the band hall, and we're honoring them as our educators of the week. Travis Metcalf and Ricky Brown are preparing their students for a concert in April. They both teach band in the West Point Consolidated School District. 
When one conducts, the other walks around each section, listening to make sure the students are playing all the right notes. Brown and Metcalf say teaching music is very fulfilling, and through the year, they see the students playing build to a crescendo. It's always a good feeling to see the things that you give the students, and you see them use it to their benefit. And uh, you see them become better from the stuff that you're giving them. That's always been a good feeling from day one. And um, it keeps me coming back. Because I love to see what the kids are all about, the beginning, and then the end part is when they finish out learning their instruments and go all the way through high school and even go to college. And at that point, I feel like I have done a part of setting that stage for them. To nominate your favorite teacher, visit WCBI.com. Try around here right now. We're watching a batch of rain and storms in Arkansas, the Mississippi Delta, and Louisiana. This is moving to the north. Over time, it may get in here. A better chance for rain as we get into our Thursday. More on that after the break. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. A live view from Columbus, Tupelo, Vernon, Durham's Pharmacy, Louisville, Mississippi. Right there, we are overcast. We are breezy slash windy. Tupelo, you are the wind gust today up to 40. I know it's been one of those hold on to your hats kind of days. Tomorrow, still breezy. Winds from the south and southwest, 15 to 25 with some higher gusts. Uh, we'll start out in the 60s, getting back into the 70s. Some of you flirting with the mid to upper 70s. I don't know if we're going to do low 80s. Those could be uh, pretty optimistic, but a lot of 70s around here. We have this big system, this dynamic system way out there across the high plains. A massive storm, a blizzard on the northwestern side of it, and we have these showers and storms back off to our west. The wind gusts here still over 30 in Tupelo and Columbus, gusting to 40, 50, 60 plus out there across a good swath of the high plains. But 32 is the current gust in Tupelo, 31 in Columbus, uh, 34 in Jackson. So it's still a windy evening. Temperatures, though, responding nicely to that southerly flow in the low 70s. Now let's talk about these rain chances here. For the near term, we're looking great here. No issues for the next few hours. Uh, there's Memphis. There's a narrow line of gusty thunder showers coming back into uh, the western part of Mississippi and Tennessee, and the stretches back down into northern Louisiana. Uh, there's a chance for some strong to severe storms across northwestern Mississippi, eastern Arkansas, and uh, western Tennessee as we go throughout the course of this evening. At this point, my money's on the chance that this really just stays just to our northwest. There's our area just to the northwest. Now, if you live out here towards Water Valley, Oxford, Grenada, somewhere in here, you may see a better chance for a shower storm. I think the better Strong storm chances will stay to our northwest, but uh, we'll watch as we go through the night. Tomorrow morning, 7 to 8 o'clock, it looks like we'll have a fair amount of cloud cover, maybe a few showers. As we get into the afternoon, a little bit of the daytime heating, we may bubble up a few strong storms around our region. Can't even rule out a severe storm or two. That threat moves away and we'll be home free for a while. But wind would be the primary threat on Thursday if we do see it. Some damaging wind gusts. The uh, tornado threat is low, not zero, but still low here. And no real risk for any hail problems or some flash flooding issues. And that's certainly good news. But of course, any storm cell has to be watched if it does develop. And there's that risk for some strong storms Thursday afternoon and evening. Now, that gets out of here. High pressure builds on in. We start to really unwind from this unsettled weather pattern starting Friday. So it's looking great. We got some 60s, we got some 50s Friday and Saturday. One the way of low to mid 60s returning Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. A fair amount of sunshine here after tomorrow. Have officially arrived in Nashville. A live report from the Music City is coming up next. WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. The SEC men's basketball tournament officially beginning today, but for Ole Miss and Mississippi State, the action really won't begin until tomorrow. Ole Miss facing up against Alabama at 6 p.m. tomorrow, and following that game, hopefully at 8.30, will be the Bulldogs against either Texas A&M or Vanderbilt. As we wait for the action to take place, WCBI Sports' Tom Ebel joins us live from Nashville with more. Hey, Tom. Courtney, welcome here to beautiful downtown Nashville. Right behind me is the world famous Broadway. Well, may have to jump over there after the live shot here and talking with you and maybe go hang out for a little bit. But as you mentioned before, Ole Miss and Mississippi State won't be playing until tomorrow, but we were able to catch up with the Ole Miss Rebels today as they are preparing for that matchup against Alabama. If you look at Ole Miss's resume, they're top 40 in net. 
So Ole Miss has basically submitted its resume and has been approved of a ticket to the NCAA tournament next week. But when you're looking at Alabama, they're a team that's going to be fighting for their season as well as a postseason berth. The Crimson Tide beating Ole Miss 74 to 53 in the regular season. So these two meeting again for the second time. Alabama, one of those desperate teams that needs to string together a couple of wins if he wants to salvage any sort of NCAA tournament berth. Kermit Davis spoke today about how he's talked, he's already talked with Ole Miss about being ready for a desperate Alabama team that's going to come in guns blazing tomorrow. Turn on the tape and let them see the last game. And, you, and that's the biggest reminder of just where we were as a team on that particular night, you know, and how we played, how they out-toughed us. And uh, so, you know, we have a lot of respect for Alabama. And like you said, they they can beat anybody. They can make a run in this tournament easily. They just out-toughed us. They worked for every loose ball. They had 20 offensive rebounds in the game. So that was probably our worst game that we played all season. And, you know, we're really looking forward to having another chance at them uh, tomorrow. We could breathe a little bit, you know, after the game, the uh, Missouri game. But, uh, you know, this team is still on edge, you know, uh, we feel like this tournament is you know, wide open as it's ever been, and we're here to compete and play. Terrence Davis mentioning how wide open the SEC tournament is. That was another one of the themes from today. As everyone top to bottom believes they can make a run to Sunday, we'll have much more from the Rebels on how competitive this SEC tournament plans to be coming up at 10 on WCBI Sports. No Mississippi State today. The Bulldogs foregoing their practice here in Nashville. They are in Nashville, though. Was able to see a couple of the Bulldogs checking out the inside of Bridgestone Arena. So Mississippi State is in the house, but we weren't able to catch up with them. No media availability today. So the next time we see them will be their matchup against the winner of Texas A&M and Vanderbilt. We'll have much more coming up on WCBI Sports coming up at 10, but reporting here in downtown Nashville, Tom Ebel for WCBI Sports. Courtney, we'll send it back to you in Columbus. Thank you, Tom. And like he mentioned, we will have plenty more coming up tonight at 10. We'll also have highlights and more coming for you tomorrow. Hopefully the games will kind of get underway in time that we can bring you stuff. But like we've mentioned, Mississippi State with that late game at 8.30. So that might be a little bit difficult, but we will do our best. Let's get to the diamond. Some final scores in the schedule for today. Ole Miss game two against Louisville. Getting underway, that finalized 10 to 8 over Ole Miss and Grambling right now tied up against Mississippi State. That's it for sports. Your last look is next. Stick with us. WCBI sports coverage of the SEC basketball tournament is brought to you by Wade Incorporated. Bank first, a better way to bank. And visit Columbus, the city that has it all. That rain off to the west really will stay to our west for a good chunk of this evening. And in general, Scott, I think the best chance for any rain tonight will be across our far northwest. So most of us will not see any rain tonight. Still a chance for a few showers storms tomorrow. Can't roll out a strong storm. We'll get rid of this junk tomorrow. Good. And the sun <laughs> returns Friday. Some great weather really for maybe six, seven uh, plus days. We'll see. A good stretch that we need. A stretch we need. Of sunshine yeah. that yeah, we need. The lawns need to dry out too. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good night. We'll see you back here tonight at 10.